This video is sponsored by Squarespace. The DJI RS2. Titan stabilization algorithms. 1.4 inch color touch panel. RSA ports with electrical contacts and a NATO quick release mount. 25% lighter with carbon fiber trim. 20% more powerful motors for high load capacity. Swappable battery cartridges with 24 watt charging. Are you sure this is a video about a gimbal? Maybe not. I promise you guys are gonna open up this bag and think that you bought the wrong gimbal, especially if you're used to the DJI Ronin S, the original one. And that's because there's no way that a gimbal this powerful, more powerful than the last one, should be this compact and lightweight. It's absolutely crazy. So I hope you guys enjoyed that intro. Please hit like, subscribe if you haven't already, guys. I was actually out in Miami uh, filming that with the BMW i8, and it was awesome because a couple of you guys hit me up on IG that you were in the area. So we got to meet up, do that shoot, make some awesome things happen. So feel free to hit me up anytime, but let's take a look at the DJI Ronin RS2. Now I definitely had some issues with the original Ronin S. Thankfully DJI has pretty much addressed everything with this one. The two biggest ones for me was that it lacked a screen at all, which meant that I was pulling out my phone to access virtually every setting on it. So now we have a huge, uh, nice touch screen on the back of this thing, that's nice. The other thing was that it didn't have any locks on it. And pretty much every other gimbal did have those. So um, DJI was kind of out in the open when it came to those features and not having it. But thankfully those are fixed, but just about every other gimbal has these as well now. So let's get to kind of the new things on this that are really unique. So it does have a trigger on the front of it, which I'm a huge fan of. You can actually hold this down, get into a lock mode, double click it, and you can basically recenter everything up. You also have a scroll wheel on the front, which is really great. Uh, you can customize this in a couple different ways. You can even trigger it to control the manual focus of your camera itself. And it worked fine with all of my cameras. So that was really cool, something that I've never actually done before. You also have a new tripod mechanism up here and DJ is not the first one to do this, but I'm a huge fan of it. So it actually gives you a full Manfrotto mount on the front of it with an Arca Swiss quick release on the top. And that kind of helps get your lenses off the camera so it serves as a riser and then also it gives you a point of adjustment for having this plate move back and forth but also having a quick release with a hard stop for getting your camera off really quickly if you want to go to um, like handheld shooting or something like that plus it's Arca Swiss plus Manfrotto standard so it kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility there. Now do keep in mind that uh, the other Arca Swiss plates or Manfrotto plates will not fit on this, but these will fit on your other ones most likely. So I did find that the Arca Swiss was a little bit small, so it didn't clamp very good on the tripod that I have, but that was my personal use on that one. But also there is kind of a really cool feature on this. It does allow you to kind of move this dial right here and really precisely trigger the exact placement of this plate, and that is absolutely cool. I actually found myself wishing that I had that on all my other axes because I loved having that so much. And then also, obviously this thing is carbon fiber, which keeps it really lightweight, compact. The battery is actually built into this. It can port around extremely easily. This entire bottom mechanism disconnects. And then this is your battery right here, which if you do want to, is hot swappable. So really quick battery changes. I found the battery life to be uh, great on it. I mean, I use this for all day weddings, never had any issues with it. I will say these battery modules are a little bit more expensive though. So you're looking at about $100 if you do need to change that out. But if you do, I guarantee it's the fastest battery swap you've ever done in your entire life. So overall, some really cool hardware improvements and even a few things that other gimbals don't have. 
Even compare this to the SE2. These are really close in size. Not a whole lot of difference here. And the actual weight of them is almost identical, probably thanks to these carbon fiber arms. So yeah, having a gimbal this powerful into something this compact and lightweight is absolutely amazing. Also, the RS2 has these accessory mounts to the side, and these have full electronics built into them. So the kind of downside to these is you can't just take a quarter 20 standard uh, like monitor bracket and hook this up to it because it doesn't have any standard ports on it. The good thing, however, is these offer some additional functionality with things like focus motors, but also even if you're hooking up like these arms like this, this is really awesome. These are extremely heavy duty. You can use them to hold some of this. They've got these custom accessories right here that you can use to um, have as arm mounts. And it's nice because they will not swivel on you at all. So really, really great for getting some customized setups like here and really heavy duty compared to just using a standard quarter 20. So I've actually been really digging these car shoots lately. So I wanted to create a custom website really tailored around that. So I hit up Squarespace, went on there and started creating. It was so easy. In one night, I literally built a brand new website from the ground up. It is crazy easy. You can start with a template. You can add in new sections so easily. You can modify those, add pictures in. You can actually search for pictures on Squarespace. So it's really nice for being able to get started if you don't have anything ready to go yet. And you can even add animations and do crazy awesome stuff to really next level your website there. So go ahead and check them out, guys. It is completely free to get started. No credit card or anything like that required. When you do want to go live, use my coupon code learning cameras, get yourself a sweet little discount there and you can go live with that site today. So let's talk about the performance because this gimbal can actually handle up to 10 pounds, which is crazy. Uh, however, I don't really use cameras that large. So, but even when operating it with some of your smaller cameras, the big advantage to having that is the ability to actually have this camera with a zoom lens in it, being able to zoom a little bit and not having it affect the gimbal performance. Um, also, sometimes I'm at a wedding and I need to do a really quick lens change, don't have time to rebalance the gimbal, so that kind of gives me that option. I will say that the auto-tune of this gimbal kind of configures it just a little bit on the low side, so you might find that you have a little bit of sway in the movement of this if you're using the auto-balance feature. Um, I will find that I typically will turn turn it up manually just a little bit uh, because that auto is just a little bit on the low side. Otherwise, I found the performance on this thing was amazing. And actually, I was recording with the a7S 3 from Sony, which I'm using to shoot this right now. And that camera has a cool feature with like gyroscopes built in where you can stabilize after the fact and get something really smooth. But I did find that when I was using that alone handheld I was not able to get it as silky smooth because it just wasn't taking out a lot of the step movements. When I used it with this gimbal, it was just absolutely like butter. So even if you have something with stabilization built in, you are still gonna want a gimbal. It will help take out a lot of that. Now I did take this out for a full on sprint and you know, one thing that these gimbals can't really do is adjust for that up and down movement of running or the hard steps. But even when I took this running with the car, I had no issues whatsoever. And then also, then I took out my secret weapon, which is a unicycle that I've been using a lot with gimbals to record kind of higher speeds. And that was awesome. I was able to record with this gimbal, super smooth, even going really high speed. So I'll post a link to that below because some of you have probably never seen that before. But it's a really cool option if you do need to record something a little bit faster moving and you don't want to have those up and down steps from running. I was actually really impressed with the software features here. So you have a lot of your standard gimbal modes on here, but also there's a lot of other things like force mobile to be able to control it with your phone. You can actually set points and track with objects on here. Um, also, there is a video wireless transmitter right here, which you can use to send video to your phone. This comes with all of the pro setups and it will work for both of these gimbals right here. This will send video to your phone. And the main reason I love it is because you can actually use active track with it. So it uses that video from your phone in order to track the subject. And it's really, really good on that one. I did use like the set points a couple of times. All right, so I basically pre-programmed a camera move on this. So it would be very difficult to do by hand. And I can just hit the start button and the gimbal will take care of everything for me. But honestly, if you are behind the camera, behind the gimbal, even if you can't operate it, the Force Mobile is really awesome and gives you a lot of abilities to kind of adjust the gimbal without physically touching it and for getting some really smooth moves. 
there were two small issues that I did have, and one is that this touchscreen is awesome, but it is so close to the joystick and your record buttons that I was just clicking it nonstop accidentally. So I really thought I'd love this touchscreen a little bit more than I do. I'm kind of digging the way the uh, SE2 handles it with just the dials because I am hitting this thing like crazy. Just about every time I shoot, I mess with it. So I'm always making a change, locking it, making a change. So there is a lock. You can hit the power button on the side, lock the touchscreen, which you will need to do all the time. So getting that muscle memory for remembering to lock the screen after I use it and then to unlock it before I need to use the touchscreen again. So I don't start tapping on the screen and wondering why the stupid thing is broken, which I've done a couple times on this one. The other thing is that there's no way to actually change the movement of this plate. Um, it's found that kind of interesting because you actually do have that ability with the other gimbal right here. You can actually slide this plate right here to move the camera closer to this or further away, depending on where the tripod plate is. Uh, I did find that kind of interesting and we have it on this, but not on this one. And it does mean that the camera is always going to be a certain distance away from this axis. You can't move it further over if you want to access the battery door or the card slot. And you can't move it closer if you have a camera that is really compact and you want to just move it a little bit closer and do a little bit less work on the motors. What's kind of interesting is that I did my review on this before I had even seen this gimbal. And two problems that I had with this one were that it uses kind of these thumb screw locks. And what's interesting is that this gimbal right here uses some really nice latching mechanisms on this. And then the other is that this attachment mechanism right here to be able to fold it up was a huge knob. And what's interesting is that it's really compact on this one here. So they did kind of fix my two complaints with this gimbal on this one. However, two of my favorite things about this gimbal are kind of negatives on this. So obviously none of those are deal breakers at all. And there is a ton of customization. You can access all that from the touchscreen. One of the coolest things though, is that this mode button right here, when you switch modes, it's not just switching between pan follow or anything like that and your other modes, lock modes. You can actually customize that to do whatever you want. It can even be customized with all of your speeds and your dead band and all that kind of stuff. So I almost wish that I had more than three different custom options on that because I was using that nonstop. Um, that is absolutely amazing feature that most other gimbals, if any others, don't have. So really cool functionality there. So there's just no question right now that this is the best gimbal around, with a small exception, and that is the RSC2 it gives you a lot of the same functionality. It is less expensive. It's missing a few things, like it doesn't have electronics on the side right here for, for some accessories on this, but it's more compact, less pricey, and even has a few advantages like having an adjustable axis right in here. However, if you need all of the features and you want that larger capacity on here, the Ronin or the RS2 is absolutely amazing. Carbon fiber arms, you will notice the weight difference if you're holding this for hours. I'm holding this for an entire wedding day. It is absolutely noticeable on that one. So hope you guys enjoy. Uh, feel free to hit me up if you guys have any questions on this. Like, subscribe. Now, feel free to hit me up on IG too. I'll hang out if you guys are ever in an area from shooting. We got some car shoots going on. I'll hit you up. We'll get a little group together. So hope you guys are doing amazing and I'll see you soon in a new video.